Uh, so Paola um, Sanabria, who is part of the first year critical studies program, I believe, um, and they are based out of San Francisco. Um, this is a great one to start with. Uh, we <laughs> received Paola's work uh, via mail. They were kind enough to mail it um, all the way to PNCA to us and um, noted that their work fits on a chair or a couch. So we were able to find a couch to display their work on. Um, so you can see the, the heart quilts and the pillow. And we have uh, a couple more detail shots of the pillow, I think coming up. Um, but this is, this is titled Home is Where the Heart Is. And I think that this piece really brings together that idea of what Christo was just talking about, kind of this homey feeling, um, kind of having a piece of furniture inside the actual gallery space. And that was kind of what we were looking for when we added it. And I think there's some detail shots if you wanna go on to the next couple slides or the next slide. Yeah, you can see the pillow in a little more detail here. Very lovely, um, some very nice textile details. Let's see, with screen printing and then embroidery. And with, and this I'm thinking too, in terms of, you know, how inviting a couch and the hand and the hand woven blanket are and those really comforting settings that they create. But then also seeing uh, the screen print of the hands, it's, it's um, there's also a world making that takes place in, you know, the stitching and the pillow and in the blanket, also creating this world and this space of home. So, you know, in that comfort, there there's activity that sort of that sets that up and frames that. Yeah, totally. And um, going to the next slide. Weston, I think, yeah, you had that on there. The home sweet home is such a, a nice detail. Um, it's something that you kind of have to get up close to see, um, but I'm glad we got a shot of that um, so that we can show you all um, the embroidered writing on the side. And then you can see the full couch um, on the next slide. There we go. Great. All right. Um, and yeah, I think our next artist we're highlighting is Heidi. Scheidel, who is a dual um, major with the uh, critical studies program and visual studies program at PNCA. Um, and I believe that Heidi is studying in the printmaking department for that program. Um, so we have sort of a shrine type of um, installation here that is a component of a lot of several different elements. Um, the title of it is called Morning Herald. Um, and as you can see here, we have a print on the wall, as well as a roll of toilet paper um, that has a poem prose type of work on it that Heidi wrote, hand wrote herself on there. And that actually does have some cat scratches on the actual paper, um, which is a really nice um, detail. And then there's two candles, some incense, and then below it, um, I don't believe you can see it in this photo, but below this are is an etched glass and some catnip with some knit um, that has been knit around. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll point out with the incense that the mm -hmm. incense is made with catnip mm -hmm. and then it is rolled in herbs that are for um, like mourning and healing. Yeah, this is a really nice peaceful piece on grief. Um, if you're able to see this online or in person, we'll add Heidi's statement to this as well, um, which has a nice statement about grief in general. I think that there might be, if you go to the next slide, there might be, yeah, some details. Mitchell and Harold, yep. Okay. And we can go on from there. Yeah, and so uh, hanging next to Heidi's piece is this triptych of photos. Um, we had to wait to install it, so we didn't get a shot of it in the actual gallery quite yet. Um, but Elena Ferry, she has these uh, this series of three photos. Um, the first one from the left to the right is called Looking Out, the middle one is Reaching, and the um, far one is called Upward. Um, so it's, again, kind of creating this sense of home. Um, we like physically see that happening through different angles here and different actions. Um, 
I like that there was a figure represented in the middle here um, actually doing the hanging. Um, but I also like the idea of kind of looking out from a window. It's very intimate to me. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Mackenzie Jarofke um, brought us a, a really lovely um, booklet that she handcrafted um, called Record of Dreams. And it's just a series of, um, I believe, watercolors and sketches. Um, and you can actually flip through it um, if you're able to come to the gallery. And I would just like to say that I believe that the, that PNCA is still open for students and staff and faculty. So if you are there, you might check it out. Um, the binding on this book, I think, is really impressive and interesting, unique. It's bound with um, uh, so several sticks, um, longer sticks, and then it's, they're kind of woven through um, on the binding edge, um, which makes for a really kind of unique look. And they're, they're carved down at one end. And then since that's all that's holding the book together, there's also a real fragility to the mm -hmm. piece. So it makes me think of whatever that like metaphor or analogy or whatever, of, you know, one thing being weak enough to break, but when there's several that sort of that strength and community or a combination and that that to me is like a way of holding those pages together. So yeah, really lovely. Yeah, very, yeah, very delicate, but powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go on to the next slide. Cassie Ferguson, Skate Care. I love this piece. Um, we thought it, it's actually hanging next to the booklet that we just looked at. Um, we thought the colors looked nice together. Um, and yeah, just kind of a, a graphic design element that adds a different medium to the, to the installation as a whole. Um, yeah, I just think thinking about different forms of care that we participate in and what makes us happy at this point. Um, and I think that this piece is a little slice of joy mm -hmm. that you can see. And that activity, I've seen it, you know, we'll see a number of pieces that, you know, show nature and be and outside and this sense of self-care through like a physicality and action. It's a nice way to bring that in. Great. All right, let's see what we have next. Ah. Yes, Summer Kiner. Um, so this is a, uh, as you can see, an installation of about five separate pieces um, that we were excited to include all together. Um, the, the three uh, main um, 2D pieces that you see that say, give yourself some grace, and then the, the green one with the flowers are all titled pocket phrases one through three. And then um, above the green piece, you can see um, a little booklet that's hanging. It's called Cat Foods. And then there's also a mailbox um, below on the left-hand side there. Um, yeah, these are, these are stunning, like hung, hanging all together. Um, I think just the, the text piece element itself is really nice. Um, it sends a nice message. Um, and then I think if you go on to the next slide, we can see the booklet in a little more detail. Yeah, Crinkle for Blue. Um, and Krista, you, do you want to talk a little bit about this piece? We, we were really- yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I just, yeah, I know. I found it very comforting. <laughs> I, I did, I kept going back to it. No, so throughout this book, um, the images of the cat are of the family cat and some of the cat's favorite snacks and things. And, uh, the making of the book stemmed from um, seeing her child, you know, showing books to her child and not wanting the, that bond and connection necessarily to be formed only through images made by, by strangers, but instead to have some of those first books and, and first um, textures to be from, from her as the mother, excuse me, as the mother. 
And then also the, the pages of the book have a crinkling sound. And I don't have children and haven't been around a lot of small children. So I didn't, so this was a new thing to me, which I, so I keep going back to it for each child, like to listen, but that, um, that auditoriness, um, and again, tactility is so nice. And it's made from the blanket, uh, bringing the infant home from the hospital. So it's just such, um, I got a, a memento of love and comfort that I just uh, couldn't help but keep going back to to see all of those layers of technique, of meaning, and also um, the sensitiveness of it. Yeah, very well said. <laughs> Great. All right, let's see what we have next. Oh yeah, Marie Connor, who, um, and Krista, remind me, is Marie a, an alumni? She, she is, okay. she was in the low residency program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marie Con Connor's um, pain series number one. So you, you can't see in this uh, image very well, but this is a multimedia kind of abstract piece. Um, the, uh, the top on the, on the top part, that's actually foam that's coming out of the canvas. And then on the bottom is, um, some string-like material. So it is it is uh, coming off of the canvas there and kind of a 3D effect. And then also a lot of her work centers, her work centers uh, on disability and also, and experiences with chronic pain and, and um, just a lot of like the physicality of living and com and trying to find those those points of comfort and of care, and I think of it also as a response to a lot of like wellness culture, mm -hmm. because being able to uh, live with pain and have space for that while taking um, that care and finding places of rest, because you can't necessarily separate the two out. It's 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 still remaining there, that uh, um, pain and discomfort. So of navigating that in a way that is still um, tender to oneself um, is a lot of what her work centers around. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, um, yeah, that's great. All right, Amira Chapman. Um, Heaven is probably in Phoenix, uh, diptych series. Um, Figure, what we really liked about this series is it's figurative, it's colorful, it's bright. Um, and you can see the two figures in each piece and then um, kind of hanging from the sky are these fruits um, and clouds. Um, yeah, so uh, I know Amira is here today, so I might be asking her a few questions um, when we're done with all of this to just confirm some things. But yeah, this was, uh, I believe, a, a fairly new piece for her. And um, yeah, we think, I don't know, it just kind of brings, I think that the gazes of the women kind of draw you in. Um, again, the colors are so bright and inviting. Um, and to me, this is a piece that really is like emulating the idea of world building. Mm -hmm. There is, there's a, you know, since there's not a horizon line and these structures behind it, there's like a, there's a dislocation. So you can populate it uh, along with these things that are in the sky, but sort of populate it with um, like your own imagination and sort of re-territorializing the space and sort of seeing it as this, this other land and potential, but also maybe Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that there's a detailed shot, if you go to the next slide, of the, the right hand, yeah, which is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the deep purples and the reds in this are, are really attention grabbing. Yeah, and then as the gaze goes out to meet the viewer with, with the coloring in the background, they're still, um, they're still communicating together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so Lauren Nash, uh, who is another dual, um, a part of the critical studies and visual studies program, um, created these amazing zines. Um, uh, they're titled Portraits of Disabled Femmes from Speculative Fiction. 
Um, you can take one if you are at PNCA. Um, and then uh, we will have the digital version on our online exhibit site as well once that goes up. Um, but yeah, these are, this is just a really beautifully done zine. There's um, illustrations. If you go to the next slide, we can see a couple illustrations. Yeah, that highlight uh, certain characters. And then I believe um, there is kind of an interactive component to this. Uh, Krista, do you wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, these came, well, these came out of um, wanting to look for representation of disabled and femme characters in speculative fiction. There's so many of the times um, <laughs> it either uh, othered or vilified or ignored. So this is kind of came out as more of like some like a fandom fanzine giving like character details about these um, characters, sorry for another word. Um, in this really beautiful, like um, it's all, it, to me it's like this freeform stained glass mm -hmm. look to the pieces and to reinforce like the, the value of the of these individuals and then I certainly can't put it any <laughs> any better than Laura put it in in her introduction which is to show and to say that disabled lives are worth living mm -hmm. so it's just a, I think a really um, forceful way to to draw out that commentary and I believe you have QR, QR codes, is that correct? Mm -hmm. There's QR codes in the corners on each page. Yeah, yeah, so that's a really nice component of this too, is the interactiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love that. And I think that we have one maybe more detailed shot after this in the next slide that shows a, a different page, yeah. Just a little variety there. Great. Okay, let's... Um, Oh yeah, Hannah Lawson. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, this is one of our first pieces that we got in um, and it, we were just really excited about it. Um, it's called Queer As In. Um, as you can see, it's a mannequin um, with uh, stitches on it that have phrases. And uh, then we have some flowers on the bottom there. And then if you go to the next slide, you can see the stitching in more detail. Yeah, so I believe, um, and Krista, I know you spoke with this artist in person, um, mm -hmm. but there was, it was kind of a Mad Lib style um, mm -hmm. uh, component to this where the artist interviewed people um, and they filled in the blank as queer as in. And so there's answers to that question um, in a different variety of different forms um, that are stitched onto the mannequin mm -hmm. um, on the front and then on the side as well. And you can see that the stitching is kind of coming off in some areas and that's intentional um, to kind of show that the work kind of a work in progress DIY type of um, theme throughout this piece. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see another detail shot. Yeah, that's a better one. Is there anything else you wanted to add to this, Krista? Yeah, yeah we had, uh, Hannah and I had spoken also just about kind of, you know, queer as a, a label, but also the ways uh, in which the word has changed and then ownership of the word, but also that it's still very complex. Um, you know, what, what is queer and how that, how that shifts, what, you know, what are the borders you know of that of that meaning so by being able to stitch and unstitch and move these uh, panels around that's sort of an opportunity to reframe and reshape and look at the at the word itself um, from different directions and some more changeability around that and then there are also small uh, little clothing label size tags that say yeah. as, that are screen printed that are on a table that people are welcome to take uh, with them and then you know there's the, the agency of deciding like do I put it on my clothes do I fill it out or or what does how do I interact with that and what does that mean 
for me. Yeah. If you go to the next slide, we have a, a photo of those. Yeah, great. Oh, and then also I'll point out uh, along with, with the flowers <laughs> as being you know, like energetic and this, this generative um, object, but also that, you know, queerness is not, you know, uh, limited only to sexuality, that this is a much um, like bigger uh, world. So to look at some ways to, to keep from limiting also. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this picture shows the um, the tags that you can take if you're able to go to PNCA. Um, and yeah, and again, you can put them in your clothing or you could keep it in your pocket or whatever you want to do, but it is um, a kind of a nice takeaway from this piece, this installation. Okay, um, next slide, please. Awesome, thank you. Okay, we have Ilsa Payne. Um, I just titled this Rock Space series. I know though that Ilsa has titled them Rock Space number one, number two, and number three consecutively um, from left to right. Um, these are just stunning in person. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, just really, really stunning. Um, I'm excited to get to get these on our online exhibit. Um, uh, <laughs> they're made from charcoal. And there's light colors that you can see through each one. Um, the farthest one on the left has a more blue color to it. The middle one is a little bit yellow. And then the uh, vertical one has some pinks hues to it. So um, you see kind of a variety of colors. Um, and these are obviously more abstract than some of the other works that we've seen so far. But I think that they really go well with the theme of this symposium and this exhibit as a whole because of the feeling, the sense that you get when you're around them is just such that of care, um, kind of of engulfness in a in a kind of, I don't know, a surreal ethereal realm in a way. Um, and the 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 charcoal parts do look like rocks in a way, but it in, this also is a very soft piece to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I think I think that is well put. There, uh, the coloring is from a glaze, uh, well, like thinned acrylics. So they're layering in this kind of watercolor like glaze. So to be able to to see, and and we'll have you know more detailed pictures um, with documentation that's happening. But to be able to to see some of that up close and those um, it's kind of a meditative. Although there's a lot of activity going on with with the charcoal and these shapes and movement, there's also this really nice um, meditative still quality as you go in and look at, at those layerings of colors. Yeah, and if you go to the next slide, I think that there is a, I think I included, oh, yeah, a DM yeah, yeah. shot. Um, and again, we'll get, we'll get some more photos um, yeah. from the documentation studio up on our site. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see this in a little more detail here. Mm -hmm. And I know that Ilsa also created these very quickly, which is also very impressive it is. <laughs> um, because of their scale and also just their um, technique is, is very mm -hmm. well done. Great. Yeah, next one, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and then um, I think we have, yeah, I think we have a couple more pieces left. Um, mm -hmm. Alexis Newman, um, this is a, uh, installation sculpture um, titled Capability. It's tentatively titled Capability with Medicine Cabinets, Bottled Gemstones. I know she's kind of playing around with some words for the title. Um, <clears throat> this is the front of the sculpture, which as you can see is a mirror. Um, and then actually on the inside of it is um, a medicine cabinet, um, an actual medicine cabinet that's been taken out. And then um, if you go to the next slide, we can see, I think, a detailed shot of the pill bottles. The orange um, containers that you see on the sculpture are melted um, pill bottles that you would get at a pharmacy. Um, and then they're included with this foam type of substance and gems, um, which kind of repurposes, repurposes them into something that's almost like garden-like and beautiful. Um, the next slide I think shows inside the actual cabinet, which is, yeah, which is stunning. Um, 
You can also, there's a component of light to this um, that you can't see through the photo, but we'll hopefully get um, online. Um, the pill bottles actually do light up. So again, it's a little, it's kind of this magical kind of almost fairy like garden. Yeah, just, um, yeah exactly. Yeah. Go ahead, Krista. Did you want to? Oh, no, no, no. I was just like, no, I'm just reinforcing all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I really love this piece. I think that the multiplicity of the pill bottles, um, you know, obviously alludes to ideas of care and illness, disability, perhaps, um, but repurposing them into something beautiful. Um, and I just keep going back to the word garden and just thinking of it almost as like cultivating um, something of growth instead of something that has a negative stigma or, or um, a negative connotation to it. I think too of, of I mean, you know, the multiplicity of <laughs> how many pill bottles and, the, and just how, and what it takes often just to maintain. I mean, care is not really, it's not a, necessarily a destination. It's not a, it's not necessarily a, a there to get to, but it's uh, a continuation of right. maintenance and care and maintenance and care. So I think that repetition. Um, yeah, really good point. And I like how the, the um, cabinet itself is also see-through. So when you walk around this piece, you really get different angles that showcase different parts of this mm -hmm. sculpture. Great. Um, I think we have yeah, one more, one or two more. Um, Rain Singri, Three Places I Felt at Home, which is a lovely um, framed piece here. Um, and there's just three small uh, sketches in the middle there um, that are beautifully done. Um, just again, the, the concept of feeling at home, um, being within a space that feels comforting. And I think the colors of this piece are very subtle and um, they kind of allude to this idea of, um, I don't know, a kind of muted, a muted uh, feel to them. Yeah, and I, I can talk about this a little bit as well. Yeah. So this is, so this triptych, it's a monotype um, and one of, one of the materials that was used that's uh, a little different than traditionally used was to use tea instead of water in the process. So in talking with Rain, I, and I, I keep going back to that and thinking about that, like this, the scent of the tea mm -hmm. and how, you know, there are all these comfort associations of having tea with friends or if you're not feeling well, but that the Thinking about scent also takes me back to Heidi's work with, with the catnip, um, incense, and the, the pillow that we saw at the beginning had some embroidered lavender. So, it, so some of those like those um, like nature um, based sensory items. And then these three images are, um, the monotypes are three different locations that uh, Rain described as like having particular like resonance and really these these connections too and nature is is apparent in all three. One is looking out from a porch um, where she where she used to live out at what was a bunch of row houses for faculty and staff that have now been torn down. So this is kind of a way for us to look, you know, along with Rain's eyes at this place that had a lot of meaning of spending time and these things, but also seeing this space of memory because that that view isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. There's this bit of nostalgia in that one to me, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the second is is a is a back deck where she would spend time with friends at their house around the fire um, ring. So it's a lot of talking and community that is important. And then the third image is, is a couch inside a house with plants. And, the, and then it's a similar thing of the importance of community and conversation. Mm. This piece, as you're talking, Krista, also reminds me back to Elena's triptych of uh, the three photos. Yeah. Um, 
there was a lot and then which also makes me think that, that the, yeah those two those two were communicating to yeah, yeah yeah because there there there's a similar um composition but also that you're still kind of under a roof and protected and but there's still an outside right yeah and just the different vantage points um which i just think that this show all together while the artists worked separately really um like you just said, the works communicate with each other so nicely. Um, and they really um, honor the theme, I think, of what this symposium is, is trying to convey. So we were really thankful to see everybody's pieces and very excited. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, that is it for the individual artists. Um, there will be, I think, one more um, artists, one or two more artists creating some digital work that we'll include on the online exhibit. 